this video, you're going to see me review the recently released Roxy and Monty plushies by Sanchi, and provide some concepts as where Sanchi could take their FNAF plushie line in the future. So, stick around to see that, and enjoy the video. But first, my plush campaign on Onash.com has now been extended to June, and is currently limited to 100 plushies. So, if you'd like to support the channel, and you need more time to get the plush, well, now you got more time. So yeah, it's on Onash.com, link in the description if you'd like to buy it. And like I said, it really helps support the channel, it'd be really appreciated. Uh, thank you. Oh man, these Five Nights at Freddy's Sanchi plushies are so great. I love them and how cute they are and how they're game accurate. I just wish they had a little more ego. <laughs> That's more like it. Hi everyone, we're back. We're back again. Sanchi's back again, again, again. So shortly after Sanchi released the bombshell of brand new FNAF plushies in the form of their Glamrock Freddy and Glamrock Chica, you know, the game accurate plushies return. We got uh, pre-orders for the Monty and Roxy plushies, which is great. I'm so happy that they they actually got to make these guys. Um, and now, they're no longer pre-ordered. They are here order. They are in my hands. So yeah, today we're gonna do a quick review on Monty and Roxy, and it's gonna be great. And I just realized his little glove just fell off. Well, I'm just like, so yeah, we're gonna do these. Uh, we'll start with Monty, I guess. So here is the Sanchi Montgomery Gator plush. Uh, obviously this is a game accurate plush intending to look based on the actual game collectibles in Security Breach, uh, which is just, oh, it's so cool. It's just really neat getting to see this guy in real life. Um, I guess starting off, uh, I believe his head is a little bit too big for his body. It's a little, it's like he's got a much taller neck than you think he would. Um, it kind of like look, looks really funny as a result. I like it. I like how funny he is. He looks very cute. Um, but yeah, I don't know if people like that or not as much personally. Uh, this plush has a lot of really great detail with the greens, the, the printing is used very sparingly, but there's a lot of really nice embroidery. Um, you can see the different kinds of materials, you have like the softer fabrics, you have the glittery eyes, the, um, the metallic fabrics, this like cool shiny rainbow printing pattern on his pants. Not to mention they actually have plastic on this plush, like look at this, you have the plastic glasses. Uh, just like how the plush is in game. Uh, sadly, the frames are black for some reason instead of purple. That's one of the two problems with the eyes. The frames are black instead of purple, or, uh, the lenses. The lenses are black instead of purple, and the eyes are, uh, yellow for some other reason, which Monty's always had pink eyes, so I don't really know why they made them yellow. I don't know if maybe that's more accurate to the game plush, or something about how, like, the visual reference was off or something. I don't know. But... I mean, he looks super cool either way. Like I said, the use of the metallic fabric's nice. He has like little gloves and his little armbands. And there's like this really cool reflective rainbow pattern on his pants. And he has a little plastic belt buckle. This guy's just super cool. He's got beans in his butt so he can sit down. We can also look at his tag. Uh, one big difference between these and the first two plushies is that the first two plushies tags were attached with little plastic ties, whereas these two are attached with little uh, string ties, which are actually really nice because they have these little uh, plastic things that you can just like squeeze and pull out, so then you can take the string and the tag off without actually tearing it, so if you want to put it back on, you can put it back on. I don't really care that much to do that, but if you want to, you can. Here's the tag, number three is Montgomery Gator, a nice security breach. Uh, you can see his little collector's card right here. There's the back and the front. Montgomery Gator, the rock and roll reptile. Monty knows he was made to be the biggest star of them all. He'll make it to the top no matter what, and he's prepared to smash anything that gets in his way. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what. He loves rock and roll, being famous, and smashing things, and he hates being in the background, inside voices, and subtlety. <laughs> yeah, honestly that tracks. But overall this plush is super cool. Outside of a few minor consistencies, I love this guy, he's really nice. And then finally, to complete our four main glam rocks, we have the Roxanne Wolf plush. Look at her and how gosh darn adorable she is. Aww, I love this little plush. Again, this plush is packed with detail and the multiple kinds of fabrics. You have the softer fabrics, uh, embroidery, the glitter fabric, the little metallic fabric. You got this like 
got more of that on the belly. You got more glitter fabric embroidery on the paw pad. It's just, it's just beautiful. It's just a beautiful, beautiful, super cool game accurate plush. I think my biggest complaint with this plush is the colors. It's not super accurate to the game. Like they're very, for some reason, saturated. Um, it looks much better in real life than it did on the website, but yeah, that might be probably my biggest complaint with this guy. Overall, she still is like super game accurate and cool. You have like the little uh, plastic on the mouth, the snout, the teethies. Uh, her eyes are super yellow and glittery. Um, you have her hair, which is uh, pretty interestingly put together. It's like a bunch of different layers of separate pieces of felt. Like you have this layer here, left and right. You have another layer down here and then a third layer and you can kind of all pull it apart. It's a very bizarre way of doing hair. I don't think I've ever seen a plush that did hair exactly like this, but I mean, it definitely works for the look. The feel is also pretty all right. It's very loose and free flowing and stuff. And you can kind of do some cool looks with it if you like pose it correctly. Um, you can see her little teeny tail on the back, uh, which this is how the plush has her tail in the game, so it does make sense. <laughs> but yeah, um, her body's got her printing on it, you know, the, the, the certain metallic fabric. You got her bands, her super glittery printed uh, ar like arm and leg warmers, and just like, and just like Freddy, her hands and her feet have little toe beans. You got little toe beans with all embroidered. It looks super nice. You got the nails. I mean, like, look at that. They're 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 very similar. But I also like how they're a little different. Like hers are more heart shaped and smaller circles. This has got like a circle shape and some ovals. I just I love the little the little design. They're like, it's not much, but it's just the little design differences. Like again, circle heart. Like more kind of pointed like pointed little beans and more circular beans. It's just the very, very small minute details that they put in these to make them stand out is just incredible. And I understand why these are so expensive. <laughs> Again, these are premium merch and this is exactly what you kind of expect from premium merch is really high quality, super game accurate stuff. I love this. Hey guys, in editing, I just realized uh, I completely forgot to look for the collector's card for this plush, so we'll do that real fast. Here is the collector's card for Roxanne Wolf, the devastating diva. Freddy may be the headliner, but Roxy knows that her fans are here to see her in all her glory, and she is going to give them what they want. They expect perfection, and she is going to give it to them, no matter what. She loves her fans, looking her best, and she hates imperfection, failure, and go-karts. Yeah, that ego thing I mentioned at the start of the video uh, stays true. I think Sanchi's honestly a great company specifically for this kind of stuff. Like, they're just so good at what they do, it's crazy. I think whether or not you like the designs of these plushies is more like a subjective take, because I think they did a super good job at translating these guys to real life. Like, I mean, just look at that. That's, that's the Pizzaplex Glam Rock plushies sitting in front of me. It's so cool. I'm just super, super happy that Sanchi decided to finally come back and make some awesome plushies again, because the last time we got a plush from them was like the Chica Golden Freddy and Fredbear, and that was like seven years ago. So yeah, now I have the entire collection of Five Nights at Freddy's Sanchi plushies. Some old, some new. I guess I don't have the re-releases, but I don't really know if you count those as separate plushies in the collection. But there they all are. All 10 current Sanchi Five Nights at Freddy's plushies. Dang, the stark difference between like the Scott-styled modeled FNAF plushies and the steel wool ones are... <laughs> Yeah, they look very different, but I like that because it, it feels like something from in the universe, which is really cool. However, we're, we're, we're doing a second half to this video. What if Sanchi kept going? Well, well, what else would Sanchi do next? What are they going to do after this? I'm going to propose three mini waves, three little mini waves Sanchi could do very easily, and I think tons and tons of people would buy them. First off, this one's kind of a no-brainer, Sun and Moon. Obviously, these two appeared in Security Breach as plushies, and the designs look different enough from Funko's that I think they could warrant a purchase. Funko's Sun and Moon are a lot more like the animatronics themselves. Even U2's does this with their Sun and Moon plush. But, obviously, you may want the mascot versions of these characters, and Sun and Moon both are unique enough, I think, to warrant plush purchases from people that really want those kinds and to match with the current Glamrock set. They're almost one-to-one -one with each other on pattern. It would just be slightly modifying the same body type and changing up the colors, patterns, and all that stuff. I think this one's a no-brainer. And then, obviously, we have Glamrock Bonnie. This plush appeared in Ruin. It also appeared in Help Wanted 2, and you can just see how this guy goes along with the other four, and it'd just be such a cool release to have him. Especially because if you wanted to ditch Monty, you know, 
you could do that, but I think a lot of people buy Glamrock Bonnie. The only Glamrock Bonnie plush that exists right now is the U2's one, and it's cool, but it's not this. And plus, I think you should have options if you want something more like the style of what U2's has, and more like what the style of Sanchi has. I think different kinds of plushies of the same character are cool for people that want the preference. And then this one's kind of a curveball. To release aside Glamrock Bonnie, what if Sanchi did a Nightmarian plush? This one's kind of a random pull. However, this Nightmarian plush has been a lore mystery for people. It shows up in all these random corners of both Security Breach and Ruin, and nobody really knows what it does. Again, it's a random pull, but I think people would really like this plush. We don't have any plushies of Nightmarian yet, and I think it'd be a really cool in-game sort of piece of lore slash merch that people could buy. So, we also have two more plushies that I think also are no-brainers, and these are more in the style of the first set of plushies, both being Scott Cawthon characters. First up, Funtime Foxy slash Mangle. I mean, come on. In the Halloween edition of FNAF 4, instead of, you know, the Foxy plush showing up in the closet for Nightmare Foxy, you had a little tiny Mangle plush show up in the closet for Mangle. This is a super easy, you know, color swap, and I think they would make a lot of sense to do it. I mean, it's... A lot of people love this character. Shoot, the games like Freddy in Space practically make her a part of the main five. So, I mean, it really wouldn't hurt to make a Mangle plush. Again, I just think it would go along well against these guys. Speaking of Bonnie, the last plush I'm gonna recommend Sanchi make is a Spring Bonnie plush. Obviously, come on, we have the limited edition Fredbear plush. And yes, while this plush is limited edition and no longer in stock, maybe this would give Sanchi an excuse to re-release this plush for people that missed out on him. Not to mention, I mean, come on, this little boy's so lonely without his old pal Spring Bonnie. You could very easily base this off the Bonnie pattern and make some small adjustments and make a Spring Bonnie. And I think an even cooler incentive to buy this plush is since the only real instance we see a Spring Bonnie plush canon in a game is in FNAF Help Wanted with the Glitch Trap plush, what if you gave this plush a really cool gimmick of glowing in the dark? From what I can tell, there do exist fabrics, minky fabrics and soft polyester fabrics, that do glow in the dark green, and you could very easily make this into a Spring Bonnie plush. As long as it was still soft and kept consistency of, you know, the looks in the daylight. I just think it'd be so cool if you could set the Spring Bonnie plush out in the sunlight and then bring it inside a dark room and it would glow just like how it does in FNAF VR. That would just be awesome. And again, Sanchi is known for their cool in-universe premium merch. I think this stuff would be killer. Plus, adding Mangle and Spring Bonnie to this lineup, I think, would really complete this set. Of course, the set's already pretty complete in its standard form, but Fredbear is a bit of an oddball. The fact that there is a Mangle plush and it's just not made by Sanchi at all is so odd to me. But yeah, if a Sanchi employee is watching this video, uh, get to cooking, because I think these are some fantastic ideas, and I think pretty much any FNAF fan that likes your plushies would be willing to buy them. Shoot, I think people that don't even know if they like your plushies or not would be like, holy crap, my favorite FNAF characters, I'm buying these. You don't even have to pay me royalties, Sanchi. I mean, uh, if you're offering, but you don't, you don't have to. But yeah, guys, thank you all for watching this review of the Sanchi, Roxy, and Monty plushies. Um... I'm so stoked to see that Sanchi's finally back, and even if this is all they make, I'm cool with it, but I would love to see them make more. You guys gotta make more. We love these things. People love these plushies. They're awesome. So yeah, um, thank you guys, and goodbye.